how can your perspective help to promote people's recovery? I think this 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 is where uh, I experience I think quite a quite a sort of a split job really. Part of my job and where I'm coming from is in terms of looking at a very person-centred model of illness, both in terms of where, where that illness came from uh, and also in terms of sort of why it got stuck and how people are experiencing both the illness and the recovery process. But the other side of me obviously is, is a more sort of traditional medical role which says that I have a list of or clusters of symptoms which have a very strong association with actual psychiatric illnesses. Um, so whilst I may understand where your depression has come from or, or where someone's voices have come, come from, if I feel that you fulfil a, a diagnostic category and there is evidence based behind treatment for that, then I'm going to say, you know, this is a person who needs antidepressants for their depression, this is a person who needs antipsychotics for, for their psychosis. Um, again, with the medication we use, we've got, we've got a, a, a rudimentary understanding of how medication works. I think that uh, we still don't have medication which acts in a 100% predictable way or in a 100% reliable way. But it does, um, if we use it selectively and if we use it sensitively and if we use it in collaboration with the person we're prescribing it for, it can help to sort of start to ease people out of those those really, really bad situ situations. Put them back into a position where they can more fully get involved in their, in their recovery. Yeah. Process. You said about with collaboration with with the person mm. you're prescribing too. Does that always mean uh, prescription with with drugs, or what about talking therapies yeah. and the holistic view, the person centred model? Yes. And how do you marry those two together? I think that you need to consider a package of care, and and you need to consider choices. And I think that the, 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 what we talk about now is to talk about informed choices. So if I see someone with um, very vague, perhaps transient symptoms of psychosis, maybe some voices, maybe um, uh, some paranoid delusions, I can say to them, well, actually I do have some medication which has helped a lot of people like you. What is also useful is if we look at, um, you know, addressing some of your anxiety symptoms with some psychological interventions, um, maybe even look at tackling some of the psychotic symptoms with some psychological interventions. You know, I need to talk to you about your drug and alcohol use and it would be a good opportunity to come out and meet with your family and just sort of talk about how everybody communicates and how people can start to make things better than rather than make things, things worse. So really at crisis points you'd be mainly going for the, the medication side of things, is that correct? Mm. And then when the person is more stronger and in a better place, shall we say, to go along the lines of the more holistic road yes. to recovery. I think that as my impression is, is that when people are in crisis, treatment is slightly less person-centred that when you've got someone in crisis, when you've got someone at high risk, when you've got someone who's experiencing a lot of distressing symptoms, you tend to be a little bit more sort of protocol dri driven and, and, and you tend to deal with the, with the most Im Im important things, things, things first. I think the challenge is to know when you start offering the, uh, the, the variety and the, and the choice. But I think even within that crisis situation, mm -hmm. You've, you've always got that opportunity to talk to people um, about medication, to talk to the carers about medication, to talk to people about what the alternatives may be. Yeah, maybe the, the, the young person who's experiencing psychotic um, experiences, uh, maybe they just need to smoke a little less cannabis and have some anxiety management, social confidence work done. Right. And in some cases that's just as effective as uh, the prescription of antipsychotics. 
I know that in America, people, um, doctors are being very criticised for reaching for their prescription pad as soon as somebody walks through the door with any sort of psychological Yeah, from a service problem. user perspective, you know, that would... That would say, oh yeah, you know, you're just putting a sticking plaster onto yes. the situation. And what would your response be to that? Medication is important. Um, in terms of thinking about the medication treatment of schizophrenia, it will result in a reduction in symptoms of psychosis in uh, around about 70% of people. So 70 percent of people will get some symptomatic relief over the course of the first few weeks. And with most of them, that um, uh, th that's a lasting if, if effect. And if people with schizophrenia choose to stay on medication, then their relapse rate is, um, is a fifth of what it would be if, if they weren't on, on medication. Um, from your, your view as a psychiatrist, what would you see the role of a general practitioner uh, to be? Around about 80% of all psychological problems remain in general practice. It, 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 it is a minority which do get referred on to secondary, secondary services. A lot of psychological uh, treatments are being delivered in primary care, right from just sort of basic counselling, um, right up to, to uh, you know, some of the more technical cognitive behavioural techniques. So a lot of people, their, their contact will just be with, with primary care. I think that even when people do make that transition uh, and start to see someone in secondary care, start to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist or a community psychiatric nurse, I think it's very, very important to maintain those contacts with primary care. I think it um, it keeps up that expectation that people will go back to their general practitioner. It also d doesn't set up those false expectations that as a psychiatrist or as a community psychiatric nurse you will be dealing with everything, really. Um, people with long-term mental health problems, people with learning disabilities, do get a fairly raw deal from primary care and that's been shown by, by, by a couple of national sur surveys. So I think as, as specialists in mental health, whilst we needn't be absolute experts in physical health, we need to know a problem when we see it and make sure that the person gets the help which, which, they, which they, they need. The other ish, issue is, is that we do have a lot of new medications for mental health problems. The problem is, is that all of them are associated with physical side effects. And with, there isn't a, perf a perfect drug. And collaborative work along with general practitioners in terms of monitoring the longer term effects of medication or in terms of just simple interventions to offset some of those side, side effects I think are very, very important. Would you say that um, medication in every instance of crisis would be yeah. the way to go? Uh, no, no, mo most, most certainly not. I think that the temptation there really is to um, is to medicalise what may be just a normal phase in someone's life, right. or an abnormal phase in someone's life, but not something which which, which actually needs medication. Um, a lot of people do respond very well to placebo in mental health, and sometimes it is just the whole process of going and seeing somebody, somebody, somebody listening to you, and if they give you a you know if they give you a sugar pill, then. 30% of people will actually show a, a response to that. So I think it's um, it is a lot more a lot more complicated. But I think that as I say there is that temptation if we prescribe medication to both try and fool the person and also to fool ourselves that this can be solved with a tablet. Right. When as I said before, I think medication only ever really gets people in the right place to, to sort of to make those changes. Um, it's like if I gave someone antibiotics for a chest infection, and they kept on running about in the rain. Well, that's not going to make much, 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 much difference. Mm. So it's the same with them, um, with sort of stress and and antidepressants. You know, you've you've got to make some changes so that the medication has the best chance to work. Right. Okay, Dr. Farmer, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very thank much. You.